Okay, welcome back to members of 121 Community Church in Grapevine, Texas, and our ongoing study in God's Heart for the Nations, published in 2019. We're going to take a look at uh, Lesson 2. It's going to be God's Blessing and God's Purpose, pages 19 to 26. And uh, we'll look at it in three moments. We're going to look at the universal scope of the Abraham Covenant. Then we're going to look at reaffirming the universal scope of the covenant. And then we will conclude with the covenant that will be made a broad place. And uh, my good friend, the theologian, Jürgen Moltmann, his autobiography that he sent to me, a signed copy of his autobiography, was entitled A Broad Place. And we're going to look at the scripture where he got that title. Let's go to block one and begin and look at the universal scope of the Abraham Covenant. The Abraham Covenant is given in Genesis 12, 1 through 3, through five verbs. Come into the land. I will make you a great nation. I will magnify your name. I will bless you. I will curse those who curse you. In other words, I'll offer protection. So the three ways God would bless Abraham, God would make him a great nation, God would magnify his name, God would bless and protect him. What is the purpose of God's covenant? To make that great spiritual nation and to bless the tribes of the entire earth. Galatians, we take a look at the Paul's letter to the Galatians 3, 7 through 9 reaffirms the global scope of the gospel. Those who believe are the descendants of Abraham. Remember that. That is a key axiom. Those who believe are the descendants of Abraham. All the Gentiles are to be blessed in Abraham. Those who believe are blessed with Abraham. And there's the Greek for it, oikpisteos. The ones who believe are the huioi Abraham. They become the sons of Abraham. In Greek it says, the ones who believe become the sons of Abraham. We have a spiritual lineage. Very critical teaching. And so for me, block one, your key points to underline are, Block 1, note 4, subpart D and E. The ones who believe are the sons of Abraham. Let's take that away from block 1. That will give us the universal spiritual scope of the covenant. The ones who believe are the sons of Abraham, or are the spiritual children of Abraham. Now let's go to block 2. And take a look at the reaffirmation of the universal scope of the covenant. The meaning of Abraham in Genesis 17.5. I appointed you the father of many nations. So the, the meaning of Abraham is father of many nations. What did God promise in Genesis 12.2? He will make Abraham a ethnos mega, a great nation. And ethnos mega. He will make Abraham a great spiritual nation. What was promised to Abraham in Genesis 17, 5 and 6? Three things. Auxano, I will increase your number. To Thame, I will establish you and put you in my covenant place. In my secure covenant place. Exerchemai. Nations and kings will come forth from you. So what about the New Testament interpretation in Paul? And we have uh, two books to look at. We're going to look at the book of Romans. We're going to look at Galatians. And I always nickname Galatians the first gospel. It's the first book in chronological order. It's the first book of the New Testament. I call it Galatians the first gospel. That's the nickname I give it. Let's begin with Romans 4, 16 and 17. Paul says salvation depends on faith. 
all those who share the faith of Abraham. Abraham becomes the father of many nations. Ek pisteas Abraham. Out of the faith of Ab Abraham will evolve the great spiritual nation. Out of the faith of Abraham. Those who share the faith of Abraham. Now, wonderful Galatians. A, the, my favorite book in the Bible, I think, is Galatians. Well, nope, second favorite. Gospel of John is my favorite book. Galatians, my second favorite. Very important verse, 329. If you belong to Christ, you are Abraham's offspring. In our men's group, we each belong to Christ. We are Abraham's offspring. Humais Christu, we are of Christ. And Paul, what was Paul's favorite sign? What was Paul's favorite Samian sign? What sign did he use 150 times in his letters? En Christos, en Christos, in Christ. If you are a believer, you are in Christ. Your salvation is secured because you are in Christ. What does that mean? You are in the faithfulness of Jesus Christ. You are not secure in your faithfulness. You are secure in the faithfulness of Jesus Christ. You are secure in the advocate of Christ at the right hand of the Father because you are in Christ. Paul's favorite sign is en Christos, in Christ. And that gets reaffirmed here in Galatians 3.29. And block two, what I want us to underline in block two is note four, subpart B, and all four points under subpart B. All of Galatians 3.29. That is what we'll take away from block two. If you belong to Christ, you are Abraham's offspring. You are of Christ. You are of the seed of Abraham. You are of the spiritual seed of Abraham. You are of the spiritual seed of Abraham. You share in the Abraham covenant, the covenant established in the beginning, you are taken up into that secure covenant, a covenant that God will fulfill because God's history will not be denied. We learned that in our previous lesson. God's history will not be denied. Our salvation is taken up into the name of the living triune God and into the history of the living triune God. Okay, the block three I love we're going to look at the Greek concept of platuno. The covenant will be made a broad place. Believers are counted as Abraham's offspring. Genesis 22, 16 to 18. I will make your offspring as the stars of heaven, as the sand by the seashore. As your offspring, all nations, nations shall gain blessing. Enta spermati, by your seed. Enta spermati, by your spiritual seed, all nations shall gain blessing. And then Genesis 26, 3-5, God will multiply his seed. Plethuno, he will multiply as the number of the stars. I will fulfill the covenant oath. Panta ta ethne. All of the nations shall be blessed as your offspring. And now the key verse for 3 is 3, 1c. Genesis 28, 14, key verse. The covenant will be made platuno. The covenant will be made broad. All the races will be blessed. They will be blessed in and through Abraham and in and through the Abraham covenant. The Abraham covenant shall be fulfilled. The Abraham covenant shall be brought to completion. The Abraham covenant shall reach its predestined goal and destiny. It shall reach the horizon of the doxa glory of God. We're going to go through our three key passages in each one of the moments. So let's go to block one. We'll start there. We'll go to block one. Go to note 4, subpart D and E. The ones who believe are the sons of Abraham. Or, the ones who believe are the huioi, the children of Abraham. I'll go to block 2. 
and go to 4b. If you belong to Christ, you are Abraham's offspring. You are of Christ. You are the seed, the spiritual seed of Abraham. Now I'll go to block 3 and go to 1c. The covenant has been made broad. Platuno. All the races will be blessed in and through Abraham. In and through the Abraham covenant. The Abraham covenant was the inaugurating covenant of grace based on faith. We as believers are taken up into the original covenant that God established with creation in Abraham. We are the offspring, the children of Abraham. And the book of Galatians, I just I love the book of Galatians. It's the first gospel. It is the first gospel. And in Paul's first gospel, in Galatians, his first letter, and in all the letters that Paul wrote, his number one sign is en Christos, in Christ. If we are in Christ, we are saved. If we are in Christ, we cannot lose our salvation. We cannot lose our sanctification. If we are in Christ, we are anointed and secured by the seal of the Spirit. The seal of the Spirit. We are in Christos. What does that mean? We are secure in the faithfulness of Jesus Christ at the right hand of the Father, still working as our advocate at the right hand of the Father. We are secure in the faithfulness of Jesus Christ. That is genitive subjective. Look it up in the Greek. It is genitive subjective. We are saved and secured by the faithfulness of Jesus Christ. We confess Jesus as Savior. We confess Jesus as Messiah. We confess Jesus as the atonement for sin. That confession of faith takes us up into the ongoing faithfulness of Jesus Christ that secures our salvation. Paul said it. You are in Christos. You are in Christ. You are secure in the faithfulness of Jesus Christ. That is a genitive subjective in the Greek. You are secure in the faithfulness of Jesus Christ. He is faithful to the promises of God. He is faithful to the promises of the Father. He is faithful to the promises of the covenant. And so we have a great deal to rejoice about in Lesson 2. And uh, that's pages 19 to 26. We got a chance to look at the universal scope of the Abraham covenant, the reaffirmation of the universal scope of the Abraham covenant, and the covenant that has been made a broad place, a broad place that extends to every corner, every far corner of creation. That's going to wrap up Lesson 2. We'll pick up next time in Lesson 3.